Today on TFE, we're looking into options trading when it comes to gold and silver miners and how to leverage those positions while still managing your risk. Stay tuned. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Financial Enthusiast with Ashley and Nate. I'm very excited about today's episode. We are going to be doing, this is going to be one of our first of many discussions about uh, exploring the gold and silver miners using options. And I'm so excited to learn from Nate today. So Nate, I'm going to let you take it away. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm going to grab the screen here a little bit. Yeah. Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So I went over uh, a pretty long video. I think it was like 50 minutes last week where I kind of went into all of this. I'm just going to cover this for about three or four minutes real quick so that everybody listening has a, a good primer to this. Um, Ashley and I just talked for, I don't know, a better part of an hour, hour and a half on a bunch of these things. So I think we have some more videos to, to bring to you about this. But I'm going to go over um, the big picture here is that I found, I thought a very good opportunity to buy lots of options with miners at a low RSI and what is all of that stuff and why am I doing it? So big picture, what are options? Options are a contract to buy or sell a number of shares at a later time, usually in batches of hundred. So one contract would be 100 shares. From there, you have two different kinds of options. I'm only gonna talk about call options and all of this stuff. A call option is when you buy a contract expecting the price to go much higher. Uh, a put option is when you buy um, you, you buy a contract expecting shares to go short. Um, that's called a put. Um, from there, uh, let's 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 go through some of the elements of a call option. So when I talk about some of this a little bit later, you'll understanding what I'm talking about. Um, an element of a call option, you have uh, the contract. Obviously, it has a uh, hundred hundred shares that you're representing. Uh, you have a strike price. And here I'm going to talk about GDX, um, the, the gold miners index. Um, I, I bought a, 20 contracts for $36 strike price. Um, and I paid the right to buy them at a later time in September for $2 each. So that whole purchase cost me about $4,000. Um, I have detailed all of the options that I have right now. Many of these were still J options I bought over the first six, half, uh, six, six months of the year off and on. So a uh, little bit later in our, in our conversation, um, I'll go over the grid of some of the options that I have if you wanted to follow along. Um, there's a lot of risk with options. Uh, <laughs> I was talking about a lot of this with Ashley here. So um, uh, basically the comparison here is if I took that same 4,000 that I, I, I did to control 2,000 shares at a later time, if I took that same 4,000 I could only buy 111 shares of GDX. So I use an example that for argument's sake, in the next two months, if GDX went from 36 to $40, um, that those contracts I could then turn around and sell potentially for about $8,000 profit. Whereas if I just turn around and sold the shares, I would be selling them for $411 profit. And that profit is roughly 20 times. So the big question here is that Ashley asks is why aren't, everybody doing options. Why isn't everyone doing this? Well, <laughs> who needs a, a job? Of, a, a lot of people are doing options. Many aren't doing well. And the reason that I'm doing this is to try and educate uh, newer people on this. People that are professionals out there. Uh, I, in my video, I did post, I said, feel free to make comments and laugh at me because you guys are dealing with things like strangles and I don't know, iron eagles, whatever the hell, <laughs> iron condors. they what, whatever these, there's all these strategies out there that I'm oh, not going to get into. Right. Far beyond my pay scale here. Right. I want to, <laughs> I want to show why I'm doing this. And then I'm going to show potentially when I'm doing this. So yes, I'm going to stop sharing the screen here and I'm going to get into my, um, my Explorer windows here. My, right. Uh, let's see, let's get this up. And I got some notes here. I'm going to move out of the way. So the concept here was called RSI. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, I don't have it yet. Here we go. There we go. So the concept here is called RSI. I was bringing this up on a different screen. Let's bring it here. I'll, I'll talk about MACD even right when I'm at it. But 
And the concept here is relative strength index. So everybody knows the, the big secret of trading is you buy low and you sell high. Well, um, that's sometimes easier said than done because Big time. <laughs> you know, you're looking at trading account and you bought something and now it's running and you're like, wow, you got FOMO. You're like, I'm going to jump on this before it goes to the moon. And I'm bringing this up because everybody in my silver community wants $50 silver and you start seeing silver run and you get FOMO and you chase things. Well, I, I wanted to bring up the concept of RSI for us amateur traders. Yes. And like we put our disclaimers in here, none of this is trading advice, it's education, things that I found, things that you can find through a lot of technical traders out there. So feel free to, to look at them, but I, I'm trying to give this to you without paying the $4,000 yeah. for, for your training here. So <laughs> I, I'm going to be kind of looking at gold here. Um, the relative strength, if this can show you relatively speaking that uh, an equity or, or a commodity or something is, is trading uh, it, at what's called the oversold or overbought, um, the overbought being way, when it's way too high. Now, the concept here, if you think about, is when this RSI starts going very high, all these guys you hear about on Twitter and stuff, because I follow like 150 of them, you'll start seeing these guys saying, hey, the strength is too hot. I'm, I'm starting to sell off. Hey, this is right. the dailies are a little hot. I, I see a pullback coming. And all of us that are sitting there thinking $3,000 gold, $50 silver, right. we go out of our minds. Right. Because you're like, you're selling us out. You're telling us, no. What this is, Interesting. is what this is, is you can see where you, where I would think amateurs that are skilled and professionals start taking profits. They start selling off some things. So if you're looking at this, I, I don't know if you can see too well. Oh yeah. But I can see. Uh, looking back at December of 2019, you can see a very high RSI. So people are selling off there. And then you can see the bottom and it, and it correlates with this March 2020 bottom. Well, if you sold right at <coughs> 68 here, 67, you missed the rest of this move up. So in my theory here, um, I'm doing options and I'm trying to look at options where you can buy below 30 and you can sell below, uh, sell above 70. So maybe you're selling a portion of your stuff close to 70. But here you can see last summer where all of the pros were telling us, they were all telling us, it's not like they didn't warn us. They were telling us, hey, uh, uh, you might want to dial back your holdings here. Right. You might. And around the same time, I got lucky because I thought what's happening now with potentially in this country, people getting evicted and renters and, and mortgages can default and, and money stopping. I thought a lot of this was going to happen last year. So I got to half cash by luck. Whereas a lot of these guys were selling off. I was worried about a stock market crash again. These guys were all taking profits. Now, what a lot of them did was they got out to a lot of cash. And it looks like when this RSI tipped down, you know, 27 around November, a lot of these guys potentially were buying back in. Right. Now I brought this up. Why would you do all this? Why do you care? <laughs> because I told you about Newmont. I love Newmont. Well, if you bought Newmont a year ago today, it's $62. And if you're looking at it today, it's $62. And you put maybe, maybe you take your, your entire piggy bank and a hundred thousand dollars, you bought all of Newmont. And a year later, you have no profits. Right. And you're like, what in God's earth happened? Well, you saw the price go up and down and up and down. So the concept here is amateurs might earmark five or 10% of their portfolio to kind of play some of these more on trades with options. Um, right now, I told you beforehand, I'm 35% I'm or so in with options plays, which is way more comfortable than I'm, 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 than I'm comfortable with. It's way right. too dangerous, it's way dangerous. It's way, don't do what I do. And I, I'm, 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 I'm begging you. But what happened was what I had seen was I'd seen um, about two weeks ago, I'd seen the RSI was way high. And this daily move up over the course of two months was getting a lot long in the tooth, if you will. Many of us thought that there might be some sort of correction back to uh, a trend line, if you will, maybe... Uh, let me draw it here real quick. Maybe we thought there would be a correction back to here. Okay. So what happened was 
last week the Fed comes out and they're they're making a bunch of noise. <laughs> maybe in two or three years, maybe we'll raise our, our maybe we'll raise interest rates a quarter a half point. Maybe we'll see. Two more people think it that should happen, and markets went nuts because the DXY went higher. Okay. I'll get into that in a little bit. But with this, we saw this strong move down. And when it hit this trend line, it hit a Fibonacci retracement of 0.5. And around the same time, the RSI was at like 3540. And I said, you know what? Right. I'm gonna start buying some options here because this is this is stupid. Nothing changed in gold or silver. Nothing changed. Right. Fundamentally, so, yeah. So, so I bought a tranche, I bought a, a, a portion of my cash. I bought a position in options then. And I said, look, this could still go further down because, well, the RSI is not completely flushed out. And luck would have it. The next day, RSI went down further and it broke down through this trend and everybody lost their minds. There was a lot of selling. So while there was a lot of selling, I'm buying. So I bought, when this RSI dipped mm -hmm. way down, I bought, I bought the hell out of it. And I said- <laughs> I said, guys, look, you see, this is the long-term trend line right here. It could still go further down below, okay? And it could go down to the, what was it, the seven, eight retracement, whatever. It could go further down. But to me, I felt that this run off was kind of just running the RSI down. People took profits quickly. And I thought this is going to be a V recovery. So um, with that, I used the RSI. Now, um, a lot of professional traders, a lot of good amateurs, people that manage money may use these as indicators where there's buy or sell signals. And if the RSI is starting to get real hot, maybe you're selling a portion of your stuff and it starts going low, maybe you're starting to buy in at times. You don't want to catch a falling knife. Maybe you want to wait till the bottom is in. And then when you see the trend coming up, you can use something called the MACD, which is a lagging indicator, which will tell you you're not out of your mind. <laughs> it'll tell okay. you and if you look here in march of 2021 you can see this rsi went down to 25 but if you're managing people's money well maybe it will still go down then you saw a couple days later the macd got crossed and that was a lagging indicator that said yeah you're not out of your mind the trend is in play so while who comes up sorry nate i just want to ask for people that may be watching who comes up with these indicators is this computers that are just like well i mean obviously people doing stuff. develop these things and then you program computers and artificial intelligence and okay and, okay. and quant trade off of this stuff okay but, but as i was telling you also before the the broadcast here now just because an rsi is low doesn't mean you buy right you would i'm saying that nothing changed with gold or silver right and I'm saying that nothing has changed. This is a good buy opportunity for me. I took the risk. Professional traders may wait until a bottom has been put in. They may wait to watch this MACD. Right. They may wait for this confirmation before they buy in. And they may buy that middle 50% move. Rick Rule talks about he doesn't need to get the bottoms or the tops. He gets the meat and the potatoes. Right. So also with his lower SI, if this was a company that just declared bankruptcy, don't buy. Right. There's a reason that there was a sell-off. Okay. Now I'm saying that there was a sell-off and I'm not seeing a fundamental change in, in the position. Now, mm -hmm. Ashley, we were also talking beforehand about gold is in a bull market. And you're like, what, what? I was like, that? really? <laughs> you're like, wait a second. Look at the last eight months here. No, 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 no. So the big picture here, uh, what we were doing was I, I was showing you the cup and the handle pattern is a technical pattern which has played out from 1980 to 2011. And now it's playing out again at a more accelerated pace because we're debasing our currency faster. Fair. So when you see our debt, it starts to be an asymptotic equation going up, which is why we're having another cup and handle so, so, so quickly after our last one. So if you look at gold, I have the dailies up, but in a weekly, it looks more closely to this cup and handle. And what we saw over the last eight months was this flag pattern, right. which we also saw develop in 2010 to 2011, uh, 2008 of gold. So right now, this is a flagging pattern, and we want to catch this move up.
but we are playing the sawtooth pattern with five or 10% or 15% of our portfolio. Maybe I have Newmont thinking that in five years, it's gonna be a five X, but maybe in the short term, I play some Newmont options to have this run up, bank the profits, add to my Newmont position. Actually, I might wanna sell a little bit of my Newmont position when the RSI is 75. Right. And then when the RSI goes back down, maybe I buy back more into my Newmont position and top off some more. Maybe I reload the options with a lot of profits. So there's a rinse and repeat cycle you can do here. If you knew when to buy, right. now the question is what you're buying. So I have that whole hour long options video. And also I detailed in a blog post exactly what options positions I bought. So you can all play along at home and you can watch me crash and burn and laugh at me, or you can watch me potentially map out a trade here, which will be volatile but has an upside of potentially a five to seven X on the 35,000 or so I put into this. This could be potentially if gold moves like it did last summer, which I don't think it will, but if it does move like it did last summer, remember all you gold hounds out there, the, the Basel three stuff that's going in play, understand China <clears throat> and India are buying out the wazoo. Countries are repatriating the money. Um, we have a situation that's just set completely where gold is to launch. Now, to okay. add to that whole macro, I was telling you about this whole uh, DXY situation. Yes, where I this brought up, was interesting. I, I brought up in my in my uh, uh, in my blog post about how um, I felt that I maybe a lot of people are tracking this. I have, none of the people, none of the 150 people I listen to are tracking that the DXY is in a long um, uh, triangle pattern here now. Ashley, I know you're not a technical trader. Definitely Remember, not. I mentioned this cup and handle. There are yeah. also uh, technical patterns you can go to to see all of these types of patterns you can see. Now, with this, you can pretty much see a lot of these triangles around 80 or 90% and will resolve in a strong move up or down. So you can have potentially the dollar milkshake guys, the Brent Johnsons of the yeah. world, um, the, the, you can, all the deflationists, the dents of the world, Maloney's, all these guys say that we're going to be seeing 120, 130, 140 DXY. And oh. we possibly could. But they think that there's going to be a crash first, which when the crash happens, everyone's going to be running the stocks, uh, running to sell their stocks, get liquid. Okay. And that's going to demand currency. And when this de great, great deflation happens, the DXY is going to go up to 120, 130, 140. Now we saw this happen in March, 2020. Um, where is this? This is, this is, oh, this is going back to 2001. When there was a crash in 2001, you saw the DXY go to 120. And we've seen the DXY uh, creep up 103 it was through 2020. Okay. Now the question is um, in the near term, in the right. near term, what's going to happen? Now, David Hunter talks about this great bust, but he thinks maybe this won't start happening until quarter four, maybe maybe quarter one next year. Right. Um, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he thinks as well that the DXY could go down to 85 first. So how does that play out? Um, maybe in the near term, you have countries sending their dollars to us and getting goods because they know inflation is here. So they want to get out of their dollar, give us dollars, and they want to take our goods and services or gold or silver out of our- While it can opponents. still buy stuff. Right. So in the short term, we may have seen a spike up in the DXY, which caused the, the short-term dollar spike. But many people see this trend line of the DXY and think that it's going to break back down. Now, if it crosses this 89.5, which a lot of people are talking as resistance, if it crosses this 89.5 or so resistance, then they feel it can fall down to 85 or so. Okay. Now, this just so happens to be resolving outside of this triangle. To make things more complex, there are things called false breakouts. So this can break out downward to 85 but also satisfy David Hunter and these guys 
by having a strong move up to 110, 120 on the other side of this. So this triangle can resolve down in the near term, okay? And in the near term, I'm talking three months. And that is why I had bought a lot of these options for the next three months. Now, what I've done to not only uh, look at this, I also went into a study over the last 10 times the RSI was this overbought, uh, oversold. Sorry, I confused these as well. I went into the last 10 times and what I did was I looked at it and I said, of the last 10 times, these were all below 30. The time that it takes to get up to an RSI of 70 averages about 58 days, trading days that is. And the average move is about 15% and the average amount is $206. So I put all of that into, you know, my calculations here and I figured, look. So smart. And a lot of these, we're going back to the bear market. And one of these is that big strong move up last year. So I thought they counterbalanced, but it's possible. I mean, all these guys are talking about a 2,200 to 2,500 gold in the near term and within the second half of this year. Okay. So that is why, why I would play the options because instead of taking that $4,000 and buying 111 shares of GDX, I turn around and said, I could leverage 2,000 shares of GDX I'm putting a little bit of money up and I'm managing this that if there is a sharp drop, I'm bailing at 75, 50% loss. Maybe I can buy back in a little bit lower, but th those are the big, the big things I want to talk about in this. Lastly, I wanted to talk about um, uh, a couple other things here with gold and silver moving and, and all this other fun stuff. Now um, I wanted to look at uh, gold why would you buy miners as opposed to just gold? Okay. Now, you know, you have the gold bugs out there. Like if you don't hold it, you don't own it. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, but anybody that buys miners will tell you to first have something physical. Exactly. A little bit, maybe you have some constitutional, uh, well, I don't know what they call it up in, in Canada, but you know, some, some silver change that some you maples. would have in the sixties, maybe some maples, have some of that on hand before you ever look at miners. But let's look back to March 2020. And let's look at gold over the last year. It went up a lot last summer. It's come back. Gold is now up 10% from March 2020. The GDX miners index is up three times. And the GDXJ is up four times. So when I'm doing options, you know, I can buy gold futures or something and lose my ass on it. <laughs> or I can buy... GDX miners, that if gold moves up 1%, GDX moves up 3%. Right. But if I have options on those GDX things, for every 1% move up in gold, I can have a 10% move up in my options. So yeah. gold may make an average move. Where is this? If gold could make an average move just of 15%, right. think about what that move may mean for the leveraged um, the leverage positions with, with, with the options. So the big move was 42% uh, move. So if we have some sort of crazy 40, 50% move, I'm retiring. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. But, but the concept here was to play that sawtooth pattern. Okay. Right. Now with that, I compared the gold, the GDX, the GDXJ. Uh, what else did I want to cover here? I covered the MACD, the RSI. Oh, this is charting out what this looks like, what I think my forecast would be of just using averages. Now, if you went back 50 times that this happened instead of 10, you'll have a better statistical representation. Right. Um, and then you would remove the, the tops, you would remove the bottoms, and then you would get the tops and the bottom. You would get your ranges. Look, I don't got that kind of time, folks. You know, I'm doing some of this stuff over my lunch break. So I just spitballed it. I said, look, I bought around, I bought my GDXs and my WPMs where gold was somewhere around 1777. And I'm expecting to sell somewhere with the RSI somewhere around 70 ish when gold hits around 1967. And I figured that period is over 59 trading days. That's on average. So that RSI could be hit well before it or it can be hit after it. But if you take a look at this chart as well, pretty much all of these are hit within 100 trading days. So my options are for three months out. So I'm banking 
that a big meat and potatoes of my move is going to be somewhere in late July to mid August. And then I'm going to start to look towards the mid to end of August to start selling some of these things. I also mentioned to you to sweeten the pot. I don't want to get too crazy with math, which I did go over in my video. But if I start to see a 2X or 3X with some of these options on a short move, I will sell one third or one half of my position to take my initial investment off the table. Now I reduce my upside gains, but I minimize my risk by getting my initial investment out. So that's the concept. Take a look at my blogs. I'll link them in this video. Uh, my, my, I think I did two videos on this already. I will link them as well. Um, I think that's covered most of it. I, oh, I also want to talk about silver very quickly. Now silver, a lot of us got into silver last year, uh, a year and a half ago, because it's cheaper than gold. So I was able to get in, get some constitutional silver. Now, what I was able to, 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 to do recently was I was able to convert some eagles for profit to get them out of the mix. I'm investing some of this stuff into um, Kinesis money, into some stuff there. I'm also able to rotate some of these profits into miners. But the silver is where I wanted you to take a look at because a lot of those things I, I, I put on my screen here of, uh, of, of my positions, which um, they're all detailed in my blog. You can take a look at it. Um, in my other blog, I also had my sell strategies. So I even went further when, when to sell, what to get rid of, how much profit, all that craziness. But a lot of these SILJ options are for six months out because a lot of people know that when this big move goes into gold, and it has many times, it will first hit the GDX. It will then hit the GDXJ. It will then hit silver juniors, or, sorry, gold juniors. And then further time out, silver is going to move. So a lot of us have been wanting $50 silver, but it's been predicated on gold breaking out so, gold, so silver could then make the run. Gold has been going backwards which has kept a tether on gold, on silver. So when gold makes this big move up that we're all expecting, that's when we think silver is going to go bananas. And my, my silver options are for six months out and not three months out. So I wanted to show you the performance here that if you just bought silver last year at this, uh, from, from March of 2020 or whatever it is, if you just look at silver, I'm seeing a performance here of 79% up. But if you look at SIL, the silver miners, and that's only up 66%. So you would have been better just putting it into physical silver. Forget the premiums for a second. SILJ did outperform barely. And wheat and precious metals were my sleeper. I love these guys. And I'll tell you why in a second. These guys actually underperformed silver. Now, if you take a look at a lot of the, these things, this wheat and precious metals, I got a lot of these things. I get 15 of these. But I also have a huge number of real shares that I own as a base of my uh, portfolio. And I'll tell you why, because when silver does move, the big money has to go into SIL. It has to go into SILJ and it goes into wheat and precious metals. Who They don't mine. They, they're like the bank for miners. So they get paid in silver, okay? So one of the big narratives here is that inflation is going to be the whole thing, which is going to make the DXY go down, which is going to make gold go up. But if inflation is there, it's also going to have oil prices go up. And the big one third of the cost of all of miners, as everyone knows, is fuel costs. So I think SIL, J, and SIL are going to perform outperform silver by a lot because big institutional money is going to be coming in. But the big money is going into wheat and precious metals because they get paid in silver and they have no fuel costs. And they have a handful of employees. So these streamer models, Franco Nevada, Wheat and Precious Metals, Sandstorm, these things are genius business models. And when big money comes in, Wheat and Precious Metals can handle that big, big money. Okay, they have a huge market cap. So I could see a Wheat and Precious Metals going ballistic when this takes, when this happens. So I don't know. I'd love Silver to go $50 next week. All of you guys saw my video. Yeah, I'm a cheerleader for $50 Silver, but... In reality, if it makes a move within six months, again, I'm potentially retiring, okay? So it's about how to play the options, what to play the options. I know. You know silver here right now, silver may be up 2%, SILJ may be up 3%, but my options in SILJ may be up 10%. So right. play that. 
And the big deal here is I'm playing is that at some point in time as well, I think that there's going to be with this inflation play, there's going to be some sort of chatter at some point in time about interest rates, interest rates, interest rates, interest rates. And I think you're going to have a lot of the tech stocks that have PE ratios of 180. You're going to have some of these start to sell off. You're going to start to see a rollover in tech. It's not going to drop. You're going to start to see this rollover, this stall out. And this money that's leaving that is going to say, oh my God, the mining sector is printing money. The free cash flow they have is disgusting. Look at the, look at the dividends they're giving. Oh my right. God. Right. And that's, that's the big move. That's the blow off top of a lot of this stuff that's going to happen before this great sell off of everything. The hunters, the, 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 who was names of the records, all these guys who think there's going to be a deflation. A lot of these guys are also talking about some sort of blow off top first. Now Hunter and uh, a bunch of others are talking about the Dow Jones still going up another seven or 8,000 from here. Now, Wow. That seven or 8,000 that Hunter thinks could happen in a month. And when that blow off top happens, there can be a correction from there. And then that dead cat bounce where it comes up and everybody thinks it's going to keep going. That's where that rollover is going to start. Mm. And that's where the PMs are going to get a massive buy-in. So mm. I think it's going to go right, great over the next month with Basel three with, you know, shrinking open interest in gold. I, I follow all that Comex stuff. Um, but that's the big picture. Ashley, do you have any questions here? I'm sure you had some notes here. We talked about a bunch of this stuff. Yeah, I mean, I I you can went definitely over a lot of this stuff beforehand, but maybe a couple of things you think the common investor might might want to understand. I, I did do a quick overview of this. Not so I quick. mean, it's definitely <laughs> um, it's definitely another um, facet to investing. And uh, this would definitely, I would say is, you know, in more of the trading um, category. So, you know, your average person thinks, oh, you just buy a stock and you hold it and then you sell it in 30 years and that's that. Whereas, you know, even me, I had that misconception that I needed to own a hundred shares of whatever I was going to do uh, options on. And you were like, no. And I was like, really? And you're like, that's only if you're selling, Right. Is, is that correct? Yeah. I mean, again, I'm sorry if I'm shorting, excuse me. Yeah. If you're, short, if you're shorting, you're borrowing from someone else promising to pay back at another point in time. Now you can also own the stock and do like, I guess they're called cover shorts where you can lend that out and make money on off of your shares. So there's a lot of tricks and I don't want to get into any of that because I am not a professional trader folks. I wanted to do this whole thing. So us amateurs could kind of take a look at how to capitalize on buy signals and you don't well, have to this is so you don't have valuable to the whole you didn't miss the move you exactly can, you can capture these sawtooth moves um and let this run for a month or two um two weeks three weeks maybe it goes up through the ceiling you sell maybe the rsi comes back down and cools off maybe you buy back in then and and it's about you know winning at the margins here you know right. so i was i was telling her beforehand you know on, on a bad month, I'm making a thousand dollars in options. That's in a bad month. On on my and best month, you got month, people out here power washing decks for a thousand dollars a month as a side hustle. Well, when really you could just sit down and learn options. And now, I mean, you I can do, power wash too if that's where your heart is. But I'm now, just saying. I got a blog here, uh, a couple back. It has nothing to do with with gold or silver. It's just the concept of the play I did. Now. It was kind of chasing uh, a company that was considering bankruptcy. Now, I had been following this stock for a while. Now, had this thing, there was a couple ways this, this could have played out, but I bought at a really good time. I bought a lot of options. And then what happened was I managed my risk because I bought these options at $1.50 and the share price went up to $7. And I sold one fourth of all of my options for a 4X. And it paid for all my options. And then I took some money and I bought shares with it. And wow. this stock, eventually what happened was whew, they declared bankruptcy and everybody hit the bid button, hit the bid button. And I was like, dude, you're at 31% 31 short. 
Right. So then I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I'm holding for a couple hours. I'm going to see what happens. I'm already paid off in most of my position. What the hell can happen? Right. So I watched it go down to $2. And then what I, I saw happen was all the shorts starting to cover and buy back. And then I sold out of everything at $4.11. And I ended up making 37 or so percent on a trade. Essentially, I made $4,000 in a month on Jeez. essentially something I did over two lunches, three lunches. <laughs> so, um, and these are the things, if you know what you're looking for, where to buy in at. Now, I don't advise people going after bankrupt stocks, that's for damn sure. Um, no, or near, no. near bankrupt ones. But the point was, is that if you can find opportune times to buy and manage your risk appropriately, and then if things start to rise, sell off some stuff, or if it, or her, if things go south and you bail at you know, 20% loss or 30% loss, you live to see another day, right? Um, you know, and you can find these trades now. You know, looking at at, at this at this at this uh, big gold pattern here, um, you know, you go back. Just let's just look at the last couple of years. You can see this sawtooth pattern with. Look at all these opportunities you have to buy low, sell high, right. buy low, sell high. But so you're not doing this every week. This is one of those things where I'm sitting here thinking maybe, hey. Oh, oh, and, and the best part of this was if you had just waited for an RSI of 30 to buy, you would have missed almost the entire 2008 run. Uh, let me see if I can bring this up real quick. I'm getting... Yeah, here it is. So you're going to love this one. So what this showed me as an amateur trader is if I just used an RSI of 30 or below to buy, all of those red lines here, I would have missed all of those moves up. And if I sold at 70, sold everything, I would have missed some tremendous moves up. So what the lesson here that I did in this blog was as you start to see an RSI below 40, start considering buying or at least thinking about thinking about buying. And all of these red signals here, all of these red lines were somewhere around RSI 35, somewhere in that ballpark. So an RSI, RSI of 35 might have you buy a tranche in at that point in time. And then maybe you do what the pros do and you watch for the MACD. If it goes further down below 30, maybe you buy more in to dollar cost average. Maybe the MACD crosses at 37 and you confirmed that you're now in an uptrend and then you buy your, your second tranche there. So there's different ways of doing this. And look at those red tops. Those red tops all went well over 70. Right. So maybe at 70, you're ta at, if I'm playing options here at 70, 75, I'm getting the hell out. Exactly. I got a, I got a three X. Maybe I can get a four X. Maybe I get a five X, but if I'm at a five X at 70, I'm getting the hell out. Yeah. Let someone else buy that to watch that last five or 10% go up before the crash happens. Cause right. look at all of these from the RSI 70, almost all of these, have sharp moves down that someone's a bag holder on. I don't, I don't want it to be you. I don't want it to be me. Right. And you, you could also see some of these where you saw RSI 70 hit and then they drop off a cliff. So maybe the RSI 70 and you sell your first tranche and then the MACD confirms it's in a downtrend and you sell your second tranche or the, or the RSI hit 72 or 75 and then you get rid of your second tranche there. So those are some strategies here that I've used. Again, please do not do what I did because I just showed you a cheat sheet about how an amateur can lose a hell of a lot of money. Right. Now those RSI indicators, you know, below 30, above 70, those are specific to uh, gold and silver, correct? Yeah. Now like every, I, every asset has its own RSI, is that correct? Yeah. So one of the things I did here, which I use gold as a proxy. So I'm sorry, say that again. You I, had I, I, I use gold as a substitute, a proxy, if you will, for the GDX. Like, right. so, so there is a high correlation to when gold drops and when the GDX drops, okay? Okay. The big picture here is, is that sometimes there's leading or lags with the miners. So sometimes, sometimes the miners can see there's a low RSI in play, or there's a, there's a move of down about to happen and they can sell off. Um, well before you know to sell. So okay. these, 
the, the, the miners may, may sell off after you sell off. They may, they, you know, or they may sell off before you do. So the concept here was I was using gold as a macro indicator as to when I should start looking at my miners. And then right. I'm specifically talking about um, here with options over 70, I'm, I'm getting the hell out. Now, I had also mentioned earlier that if I have 100,000 in Newmont and Newmont over the course of six months goes up to 120,000 and the RSI is 70, okay? I'm thinking maybe I sell $20,000 in Newmont. Let's take that profit off the table. And now I have a hundred thousand dollar position. Well, when this starts crashing back down to eighty, uh, uh, your 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 new mod is only worth eighty thousand, but the RSI is thirty. You can buy back in and get a hell of a lot more shares cheaper. Long story short is that you can bank some of your profits um, and then buy in cheaper. Get and and what happens then is the uh, the stock recovers and you actually may have ten percent more shares or twenty percent more shares than you had same time before at the exact same price. So instead of saying, saying, hey, from year to year, I have 100,000 in Newmont at $63 a share, and I had you know 1,500 shares or whatever the hell it is, you can now turn around and say, well, Newmont is $63 a share, but I now have 10 or 20% more shares. Right. So I played the, the, I played the profits and the losses off of this. So okay. it gets a little bit more, more complicated. People talk about tax loss selling in December. I'm still wrapping my head around that, why I would like to bank losses. You know, the funny thing is, is like me and my friends are competing and I was up massively. So I'm like, man, look at, look at how awesome I'm doing. I'm like up like 100%. Oh, yeah. Well, right. I'm carrying losses into the next year that now I know better. I could have taken those losses off the table, not paid taxes on those losses. And then I could have taken that money and then rebought into what I liked and then, you know, watch that money go up. So I'm still learning a lot of this, but this specifically was looking at, you know, options, the leverage, why using the mining shares and the best, oh, the best thing I didn't bring into this, to sweeten the pot on miners. Um, the big thing that a lot of institutionals- now, Nate, hold on. I'm yeah. really sorry to interrupt you. And I didn't want to say anything for the last five to seven minutes, but something wonky is going on with your microphone. Okay. Um, I don't know what has happened and I don't know if the recording has, and I apologize to our viewers. Um, Worst case scenario is I can just cut it off at the end and fade out. But uh, what we can do is maybe we can just leave it here and- yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. I think we're getting. Yeah, because it's time. it's really it's really tough to um to make out what you're saying. Like I know what you're saying because I talk to you all the time, but um yeah, it's 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 just getting a little getting a little much. And I you know you were you know showing it literal gold. This episode is literal gold. Like Nate is showing you, you know. It's a what I can do. That's fine. We can cut it here. What I'll do is at the very end, I'll just kind of cut off the very end of this and fade it out. So we're fine. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, my, my video editing skills are that much I can cut about a minute off the end and fade it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to have to. Is, is my microphone microphone you're, sound okay to you? You're fine. I'm scooching around in my chair at times. You might be hearing some of that. Oh, geez. Well, when I send you the recording, you're going to hear it. Anyways, um, we'll end off the episode. Maybe you can link this together when you cut out the part where you're a little wonky, but that's fine. I'll, um, I'll listen our... to it again. And I'll post this probably sometime. I, I'm supposedly having off tomorrow. So I may be doing some trading tomorrow and then listen to this. And when it starts getting a little bit wonky, what I'll just do is I'll, I'll just probably flag it there. And then I'll see what material we didn't cover. And I'll just, we'll, we'll talk about that in a part two. Okay. I love that. If you idea. can't tell them, I'm super excited about this topic. So yeah, well, it's very exciting. I mean, you know, you spend a couple of hours learning about this stuff and you can make thousands and thousands of dollars and you and I are not, you know, uh, glamorous, uh, over glamorized people where we're, you know, selling gum road courses or anything like that. You know, this is like real legit and you're a really meticulous guy and you're very well thought out and you're very analytical and, um, you know, oh. this, this kind of information is to not be taken lightly because you're actually offering, like real, you know, no pun intended, but like kind of intended, you know, this is like solid oh. gold stuff right here, you know? So well, one of the things that you can use like a, a Larry Lapard did, okay. One of the, like Mike Maloney would do, they're looking at those RSIs for like Bitcoin. And when they're Bitcoin, 
Mike Maloney sold out a lot of his Bitcoin at 60,000. So that helps people that they don't chase it too much. They can look at the RSI of these things and see how far it is over the 200 or 50 day moving average. And when you have higher RSIs of something like a Bitcoin, you can take those profits off the table and then roll them into a gold and silver. And then when this stuff is at a high RSI, you can roll those profits off the table and then buy into a Bitcoin that might be lower. Right. Okay. So you, it, it's, it's kind of that whole wealth cycle stuff that Mike Maloney talks about. You can get that arbitrage on different uh, assets. So pull money off the table when, when times are good. And when gold is po possibly going down, you deployed that money into Apple and, you know, others where you have options on them and you're making money on that. Those RSI is going up. Okay. okay, guys, thank you everybody for watching. If you have any questions, please, you know, throw them in the comments for us. Like, subscribe, share. If there's somebody that you know that could, you know, uh, get some value from this video, you know, help us out with the YouTube algorithm. And um, I just always want to say a huge thank you to my partner, Nate, for being, you know, such, um, you know, such a wonderful person to learn from and listen to always fair, always balanced. Um, and he never goes off into outer space the way so many people can only little, with this only topic. A bit. Thank you everybody for watching till next time. Take, take care. care. And as always guys, please don't forget to like, and subscribe to our channels. It helps the algorithm in YouTube send this video out more and more. We really appreciate all your support till next time.